Hi there. Welcome to our winter camping series. I thought for this first video, what I would do is show you what I use when I go out winter camping. So the first thing I take is a hammock. Now I just bought this one at Walmart. Uh, I think it was $25 or $30. And it's served me well uh, for uh, this last year and for this year uh, for winter camping. I don't have any, I haven't seen any rips on it or tears or anything else. Uh, the name's worn off there and I don't remember what it was. Uh, but like I said, it was at Walmart, 25, 30 bucks. Now inside of it, it also came with some rope uh, that you can use to hook this up to the tree. Now this is the rope that came with it. Uh, if you can, I would go out and buy some uh, climbing rope. Uh, I would get probably maybe two 10 foot sections. And then what we did was doubled it over and then just tied a knot in the end of it. And I'll show you that once we hook it up to the tree here. Uh, now the one thing I did replace on it, if you can see the uh, carabiners that came with it were just uh, steel carabiners, uh, probably galvanized or whatever, but they actually started rusting under on the threads and inside here. So what I did was I went to Lowe's and picked up some stainless steel ones. Uh, they were a little pricey, but it's nice. I don't have to worry about these things rusting and wearing out now. So, what we're going to do here, uh, the first one, the first rope that I have, I just have one knot in the end. And I use this one usually on the bigger tree. So, what you have to do, just come around the tree and just put the knot through the loop that's already in the rope. And then what you can do... Here's the one for the other side. I'll show you that when we get over there. So what I do then, take my carabiner. All I have to do is slip it through that loop and it keeps my hammock right up off the ground while I pull it out for the other tree. Now, uh, on the other side, it's a little different. I have the same length of rope uh, with that knot in the end, but I also have a few more knots up, up through it. Uh, so what we do there is hook this around the tree and then basically I just pull it in until it uh, stops at one of the knots. And then what I can do is take my other carabiner and just slip it in whichever loop seems to work out. And it's nice because if I need to, if uh, this height or this length between the trees or this height isn't working, I can just tie another knot in this rope right here. So. Uh, so here we go, we have our hammock hung, uh, it's a little low so really all I have to do is I'm just going to come over here and loosen this up a little bit, slide it up the tree, then we can, that way we can easily adjust the height of this hammock. Now one thing I would definitely suggest is once you have your hammock hung is to sit in it. Uh, make sure it's the right height. Uh, make sure it's the right angle. You don't want too steep of an angle here because uh, then you'll kind of be sit, sleeping in a U shape. Uh, if I need, if I really had to, I could tie another knot in this other side too if I needed to straighten this out a little more. Uh, that's probably actually what I would do if I was out. I like mine a little straighter across when I'm sleeping in it. Uh, but for this video, this will work out. Uh, like I said, I would very much suggest that you try this out first before you go any further. Uh, one time I was in a hurry, I didn't do that. And what ended up happening was after I got everything put up, I went to climb in it and it was too high. And what I ended up doing, instead of being able to sit down in it and just laying right down in it, what I ended up doing was I had to crawl in it on my stomach and then flip over in there and it just was not as easy getting in and out of as it should have been. So that's what we have right now. Here's our hammock. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is your ridge line. I talked about this in some other videos uh, and I think I'll probably do just a real short video here showing just how to create just the ridge line. Uh, if so, I'll get a link in this video for it. So basically, I'm just going to get our ridge line out. Now since it's winter time, we want to uh, keep this ridge line down kind of low to our hammock. We don't want to have a lot of space between our ridge line and our hammock because we want to keep all that heat trapped down in here. Make sure it is up off of your hammock string though. 
but I pretty much keep it right close by it. And like I said, my hammock, I would probably have it a little straighter here, so this ridge line would actually be even closer to me. You already have your prussic knots tied into your ridge line like you should. Uh, make sure that they're actually up on it and not trapped down at the end like I just had them. So let's try this again. So, here we have our ridge line. So now I don't use a uh, normal tarp on mine. What I use is my emergency space blanket. Uh, this has that reflective side on one side, and that's the side that you make sure that you put down towards the hammock or on the inside. So what I'm gonna do, Basically, I'm going to put it over to our ridge line for right now, and uh, we're going to actually tie it down. We're not going to we're going to put it the long way across there, uh, but we're not going to actually hook it to the ridge line. So, what we're going to do is I have carry with me uh, my tent stakes. Uh, if you don't have them, you can always make them out there in the woods. Uh, I have a video out there showing you how to make some tent stakes, uh, but I have them with me here. So what I'm going to do is come around uh, to the back side here and we're going to tent stake the bottom of this tarp into the ground. So, really the only thing that you kind of need to do, because these grommets in this are uh, pretty small, is I just uh, put it through and then we just tie a knot at one end of it. Uh, it's a little harder when the wind's blowing out here. I'll try to keep this from getting destroyed here. Uh, if you want, uh, you can make a loop into uh, this line here and put it through your tent stake. But what you basically want to do is keep this down. Uh, you want to get it tight, but you want to keep it so that it's uh, pretty close down on the side of your shelter, or on, sorry, on the side of your hammock. You don't need this to be stretched way back. You want to keep it out here. So now we have the back of it staked down. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could pull this end out and you could stake this out in the ground too. Uh, the problem with that is it makes it uh, pretty tight in here. Uh, it's hard to move around when it's that tight in there. So I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to do with that. Now, this is just some one mil uh, plastic drop cloth picked up at Walmart. I, I think it was like three bucks. It wasn't very much. It's a 10 by 20 foot uh, piece. I'd make sure I get at least that big of a piece. It's not that, as you can see, it's not really that big to carry around in your pack. So, so now we have, as you can see, with this emergency space blanket on here, it doesn't really cover our whole hammock. Uh, if it rained or anything else, or even just the wind blowing at night, it's going to blow right into there. 
but we're not worried about that because we're not really using that part uh, as our tarp. What we're using that for is the reflective backing to reflect our heat back inside of this. What we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of plastic as our tarp and then what, we're, what it's going to do is basically turn our hammock set up into a super shelter. So it'll just take me a second here to unfold this. Like I said, now the wind's picked up. It makes it a little harder when you're working with, uh, you know, this big of a piece of plastic. So. so uh, like I said, this is a 10 by 20 foot piece. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put the 10 foot piece across and keep the 20-foot piece this way as the length. So, what we're going to do is uh, throw this over here to get it down there, and then I'm going to go around to the other side. Uh, now, what I did was I already picked this up, but basically I just picked up a nice piece of log, uh, not real long, and what we're going to do is just basically put it inside of here, and we're going to roll this up. And that's pretty much how we're going to hold this side of this piece of plastic down on the ground. You have a 20 foot piece out there, so you uh, have a pretty good length to deal with, so you can roll it up. Uh, don't need to worry about rolling it up too much. You should have plenty left over there. As you can see, I still have a lot left out on this end. I could have even rolled it up some more in there if I needed to. Uh, before we do the next part, make sure that you do have as much rolled up on that as you want because we're going to be poking some holes into this, and when we do that, you're kind of stuck with it where it's at. So make sure you have your back rolled up as much as you want to keep it in there uh, so it doesn't come undone. I think we're okay, so I'm going to let it go there. And then, uh, now basically what we're going to do is I'm going to grab another piece here. Uh, said, just a piece of log, nothing special about it. I uh, wouldn't get anything dead and rotting just because it's going to be hard to work with. It's going to fall apart. Yeah. And if it does have a lot of branches on it, you might want to cut them off first so you don't rip your plastic all up. You don't want to shred this plastic. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here. We're going to roll this up. I'm not real tight here. I'm just going to keep this. Uh, I just wanted to roll it up right now because with the wind blowing, it keeps blowing all over the place. We kind of keep this steady in one spot. Now, here's what we have now is it's still pretty, uh, you know, once the wind dies down and once we finish hooking this up, it's still going to be pretty tight down on you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of paracord here, uh, one for each side, and we're going to uh, uh, actually feed it through. And then we're going to poke a little hole in the plastic and feed it through the plastic also. Now, like I said, uh, these grommets aren't too big in this. So basically, usually if you're using paracord, you can get away with just putting a knot in the end. Uh, and it's too big to fit out through there. So. I'm going to cut this piece here first. And we're going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. Now I'm putting it down through. I'm putting the knot on the in, inside, like on the shiny side, so that we can pull this cord out this way. Okay. So what we're going to do here we're going to kind of match this up where this uh, piece of paracord should come through this plastic. And basically, I'm just going to poke a little hole in there. 
don't want to poke anything uh, too big. Like I said, this is just one mil plastic. Uh, it's not real strong plastic. You can use two, three mil, whatever you want. Uh, you can even use six mil if you wanted. That just does add some weight though when you're carrying it around with you. Uh, next thing I'm doing, uh, just have some grill tape here. Uh, I'm just gonna rip off a couple pieces and I'm going to uh, reinforce that hole that I just poked through there. Should make this a little stronger. So I'm just going to uh, put a piece over the hole on this side, a piece over the hole on this side, hook it down, and then we're uh, just going to poke back through this. Okay, so I'm going to pull my paracord through. Tell I actually uh, actually ripped it a little bit when I was doing it, but it's no big deal. I'm just gonna get off another piece of uh, grill tape here. Then basically I'm just gonna go that part that I just ripped out there. I'm just gonna put another piece on to reinforce it, and that should hold it up pretty well. I'm gonna do that on the other side here real quick. Okay now, so I have some uh, guidelines coming out from that. Now what you could do is basically just come out here and you know if you had another tree out front, just tie this off to the trees out front uh, and that would hold that up. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing this, uh, make sure you leave some at the side here. You know, don't put this, uh, don't put it way over right at the edge because we're going to be using this part of it too. Um, so. Uh, up to this part, uh, basically I got this, uh, I was watching a video Jim Kane did on YouTube, uh, and then the next part of how he hooks it together was were his ideas. Uh, but then I got to thinking, well, now when I'm out, I have to look for four trees. I have to look for two trees that are the right distance apart. I have to look for two trees that are out in front that I can hook these guidelines to. I don't like to bring them down to the ground. Like I said, it really makes it tight in there. It makes it hard to move around, hard to do things. So. What I came up with, if you don't have uh, those other two trees out front to hook on to, what you can do is come over here and we're going to tie off onto this tree. Uh, doing some real quick knots just to show you. So we're going to tie both these sides off over here.
Okay. And then uh, once we get this next part, then I'll show you what we're going to do with those lines. So, um, this was one of Jim's ideas, I think, that uh, worked out really well. These are just some binder clips. It's like uh, those big paper clips. Uh, I found these at the Dollar Tree we have here in town. They were like eight or ten for a dollar. So I grabbed two packs of them. They're real lightweight to carry with you. Just throw them in a bag, carry them, and they work out beautiful for this next part. So what you're going to do here is basically you're going to take your plastic sheeting that we have over top, give it you know like one or two folds over, depending on how much you have left, and just clip it off. And you just do this the whole way down both sides here. And you can always, you know, we have these logs in here holding these up. You can always move them in where we need them to, to kind of get these closer together so we can hook these up. Uh, now you could, if you wanted to, and I'll show you when I walk around this with the camera, uh, you could poke some holes in the back and put your uh, tent stake lines out through your plastic out there too. Uh, if you don't have to, I wouldn't recommend that just because then you just have one more hole that you poked in this uh, pretty thin plastic here. So I try to keep that down to a minimum. I'm just going to go real quick. I'm going to hook up this other side. This is why you needed to keep some extra there on the edge. You didn't want this to be the whole way out to the edge. And we can move our log down to the bottom whenever we need to. <coughs> just rolling it over a time or two. Same way up here. Now the thing is though, you don't necessarily want this thing to be uh, completely sealed up. <laughs> sure, that's going to trap in uh, a lot of your heat. It's going to give you a really good like that greenhouse effect. But the problem with that is it's also it's going to turn into like a sauna in there. You know, once you get the heat in there and your and your moisture from your body, you're going to end up getting kind of damp in here. You're going to get your clothes and stuff damp. So what you want to do is. Uh, you're going to need to keep an opening. Now, I like to keep it down at the bottom because we know heat rises. So if I keep it down at the bottom, maybe I won't lose as much of my heat out of this thing. And you can always, you know, pinch it shut at night when you're sleeping. And if you wake up uh, and you, things are getting a little uh, wet in there, a little humid, you can open it up and get some air in there. You also want to make sure, I mean, this is just like, you know, you tell your kids not to put a plastic bag over their head. I mean, this is kind of what you're doing is you're getting fully enclosed in this plastic bag. So you want to make sure you have some air coming through there for you. So that's what we have so far. Uh, like I said, for me, uh, this is kind of a little close. You know, this tarp is laying right down on me, especially if my hammock's up a little higher than this. Um, oh, and another thing I forgot uh, to mention was uh, I always like to have a ground cloth that I put in there. That way I can put my boots on it, you know, whatever I'm whatever my pack in there or whatever, I put this ground cloth down. So, the idea I had, and I want to give it a try here, was, okay, let's tie this back off to this other tree, but we still need to hold it out. So what if we fashioned ourselves some sticks uh, to put in here and actually hold this other line off? Now this one's actually not might be. Uh, and then what you can do, you uh, just grab yourself a nice uh, Y-shaped stick, You're just kind of holding up on this, like this. Yeah, I think what that did for me was I don't have to worry that I don't have these two trees out here to hook my line on, but I still have, uh, you know, my tarp and my plastic up off of me. It gives me some breathing room in there. Uh, we can always, you know, if we need to, we can unroll this a little bit. You know, if it's too tight there, we can unroll it. We can still hook it up. Uh, we can still get in and out of this. 
Now, for this to really work, though, what you're going to need is a fire. Uh, and what's going to happen is you're going to build your fire out front here. I would make it uh, at least one good step, maybe a step and a half away, because you don't really need it super close to this. And you have to wash this plastic uh, and your hammocks nylon and the space blanket will melt if it gets sparks on it. So you kind of want to keep your fire a little bit away from it. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention was uh, your placement of this. What you want to do is you want the crosswind going this way. Especially if your fire's out here, you don't want it blowing the smoke into you. And you don't want it blowing from behind because then it'll create a draft down and can just circle that smoke right back into you. So you want the crosswind going this way. And that will also um, depend on where you want to keep your opening at. Like if my wind's coming this way, then I'm going to leave my opening over there because the wind's blowing this way. It's not going to blow directly in, but I am going to get some fresh air in there. And hopefully I'm also going to get some of the humidity out of there. So I'm not going to build a fire for this today. I just wanted to show you how I set up my uh, hammock, my super shelter. Um, it is nice. I mean, if you want to practice, sure. But when you're going out, especially if you're out, going to be out uh, hiking a long distance, I would keep my plastic rolled up and open it when I got there. Uh, the only reason being, I can never get this thing to go back in that small into that bag like what I got it out of. It usually ends up just a big ball of plastic. Uh, like I said, you can always get a, a thicker plastic. It'll hold up a little better. You know, this might only last me one or two times. You know, if I was going out for uh, three or four nights or whatever, I might throw two or three of these in my pack. They're not, like I said, they don't take up that much room. Uh, and it's nice to have it. But if it does rip, we'll just do what we did when we put the uh, holes through it here to put the paracord through. We'll just put some Gorilla Tape on it and just patch it up. So here's what we have. I'm going to grab uh, the other camera here. I'm going to go around this and show you a little bit what it looks like a little up close. So. You can see here, uh, I didn't close this up the whole way. I could bring it around here, I could bring it under here, close it up, uh, but that's what I'm gonna leave as my door. I uh, also, you know, I didn't push my tent stakes in all the way, but you'd wanna make sure that you do that. I'm not actually gonna sleep out here tonight. I was just coming out to do a little demo. Uh, show you this side here for my uh, rigging up to extend that without the extra trees. I think this side worked out pretty well. The other side I could have used a longer stick on there I think. Um, Would have made it a little easier. Uh, you do want to make sure, you see I have this out here, I do want to make sure that my plastic is completely outside of my uh, hammock or else if it rains or snows or anything it's going to come in plus I'm going to get some air flowing through there but just throw another clip on there. And that's it. You can see the clips I put on. Uh, I didn't put, I'd probably put some more on there if I was doing it. I didn't put a, as many as we should have on there this time. And I'll show you, uh, you know, probably out here where the uh, tarp is. It's probably about where I build my fire. I build a nice long fire. I want it to uh, be the length of this hammock and this super shelter setup. What that's going to do is going to let the heat go in your uh, your reflective tarp on the back is going to reflect that heat in, and your plastic is going to trap it in there. So there you have it. Uh, this is how I do winter hammock camping. Uh, as long as I can have a fire, uh, it does it does help you a little bit, even if you don't have a fire, because it does trap your body heat in there and it keeps the uh, wind out and stuff. Uh, but it w really works better if you have a fire. I mean, you could probably get it up to. 70, 80, maybe 90 degrees inside this, depending on how big your fire is and how close it is to it. Um, just be careful with your fire out there. So, there we go. Um, this is the first in our video series of winter camping. I'll have some other videos to show you, or, well, to make and then to show you. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed this. See you around.